Good morning, or afternoon, or evening, whenever you're watching this. Today we're finishing off a video series about how to build an Airbnb clone in Bubble. In part one, we worked on this homepage, and the search functionality here gave the user the option to put in a location, put in a check-in, a check-out date, number of adults and children, and search. And then in part two, we worked on this search results page, uh, with some results of the location that we chose and a map and today in part three we're going to look at a property page so what happens when you click on one of these properties it's going to take you to a page with property details and the ability to reserve if we go to Airbnb it's going to look like this we're going to add a gallery of images we're going to add details about the property on the left and we're going to add a little reserve widget on the right that's what we're doing today let's jump right in First thing we need to do here is go to our search results page. When you click on a cell here, we need to send you to this new property page that we're going to make. So I'm going to choose the group that I have within uh, the first cell here, the main group. And I'm going to say start a workflow. From here, we're going to add a new action and we're going to navigate somewhere. So we're going to go to a new page. And the destination is not here yet so we're going to create a new page called property choose the page cool now let's head over to that page now that we created it it's here and the first thing i need to do here is set the type of content which is going to be properties that's the type of content that's going to be on this page uh, that's one of the tables that we created in one of the earlier videos uh, so now that that is set, we can actually go back to our search results page, go to workflow, and this workflow we just set up, I want to send some data. I'm going to send the current cells property. Uh, so it's going to take the property from the cell that you click on, and that's the property that's going to load on the next page that we just created. So let's do a quick test. We're going to go to back to our property page. And I'm just going to throw a text object on the screen. And we're going to say we want the current page properties. Uh, we want the name. Just want to make sure that when we go to the screen, the correct name is loading. So now when we click on either Salty Blue or Cozy 2 Bedroom, it loads the name. Let's go back and uh, test Salty Blue. There we go. So looking good there. So we're going to head back to properties, yep, property page here, and just going to do a couple things first. We'll make this a little bit bigger, just so we have some space to work with. If we look here, see this is kind of centered a bit, some space on the left and right. We're going to do, we're going to do our own centering, uh, so I'm going to throw a group on the, on the page here, and we'll call this group center, why not? And let's just do some left and right padding here so we're centered. So we'll do about 40 pixels. Okay. And we'll do one more group that'll have a margin on all four sides. Group, center, margin. So this will start on 20x, 20y. And so we'll do 20 on all sides for this one. I want to throw this right at the top here, make it full width, and we'll just style that so it's nice and big. We have our H1 heading style there. We have a couple more things right underneath the name. We have the location, reviews. I'm just going to throw the location on ours. So another text object. Dynamic data, because we're getting data from the table. And one thing I think I forgot to do, which we'll go back for a sec, set the uh, type of content on my groups. This first group, group center, type of content, also gonna be properties. And the data we're gonna get from the page. So the page has the property loaded, now we're gonna load it into this group as well. And now that that's done, this uh, text object that we have inside two of our groups here 
we can take it from the parent groups property and we'll do the same thing for location parent groups property location put a style on that so now we should have name and location let's just double check salty blue and location we'll just give that a little bit more space we'll just go right across why not all right next thing images let's figure out how we can put uh, images on the screen here so heading back we're gonna need a repeating group and instead of re repeating vertically we're gonna repeat it horizontally repeating group throw that in uh, this type of content is gonna be image because we want to show images here and the data source is going to be the parent groups properties images let's try that now layout style instead of scrolling vertically here we have four rows and one column we want to do it horizontally and add some columns so now we have one row three columns let's see how that works want an image object that's what I'm gonna throw let's just do that a different way actually just gonna select it and draw it in there this is gonna show the actual image in the repeating group uh, it's not gonna be a static image because it's gonna be dynamic because it's gonna show the uh, images that are loaded in for the specific property that we're looking at so the dynamic image is going to be the current cells image and we're gonna uh, make this render zoom. Let's take a look. Looks good. I just wanna take the lines out. We don't need those borders. But uh, there's my salty blue two pictures. So to take the lines out, I have a default style here. I'm gonna remove it just so I can set up my own style. Define each border independently, uncheck that, and also want to take out this separator here. No lines, that looks pretty great. Let's check um, the other property and make sure that those images are populating for that one. So cozy two bedroom, boom, boom, boom. And does this one scroll? No, this one only has three pictures. Let me try salty blue one more time. I just want to make sure that it scrolls left and right. Yes, it uh, see that. So this one has four pictures. So if there's more than three, then you can scroll. Moving on. This description section on the left. There's a bunch of stuff here. We're just gonna add the, the description field. Um, of course, you can add all of this stuff if you wanted to, but uh, for the sake of time, let's just throw the description field there. So we're gonna put a group on the left side here and then we're gonna do a inner group and this one we'll say 20 on the X maybe 40 on the Y just to have a little bit of space between the images and the property details it should be good and we're gonna throw our text object on the screen there make it full width so parent groups uh, description give it a style this is just body test it out look at that this is a cute three bedroom house open concept living and dining room who does not want to stay in salty blue too moving on we need a reserve widget on the right side so group We'll throw this in here. We'll call it a group mm, reservation. And that will be, take up the remaining space there. And we'll actually put the widget in this group here. So we'll call this one group reservation widget. See this, uh, see this widget here? It's got a border. It's got like some shadow around the border. Let's try to see, it's got like circled edges. Let's try to do something similar. 
this group here, we'll set the type of content. And if we look at the style, there's a default group style. We're going to remove that, make our own style here. Border style, solid roundness. We'll do nice and round. Color, we'll just make it uh, gray, light gray, and shadow style. Outset, I guess. I don't know what what the difference is. We're going to throw our, our reserve button in there too. And we will make it Airbnb Coral. That's big. Maybe something like that. All right. So let's just make this a little bit bigger and see what that looks like. Look at that. We have borders, we have shadows, we have our button. Button doesn't do anything yet, but we'll do that soon. That is looking just like this one, is it not? Almost. Okay. So, what do we need here? We need the price per night, we need the rating, we need check in, check out guests. We already did all this stuff on previous screens in previous videos, so I'm just going to copy it over. Why not? So let's go to um, search results page. Here we have the rating, the price, command C or control C. Just pop that here. Oop. I made a group a little bigger than I wanted. So let's just move this down for now. Bring this back over. Now I think it was flipped, the rating was on that side and the price was on the left side. See if that fits. Uh, not quite. Just gonna do some styling, BRB. All right, so I bolded the price per night and I made all the text a little bit smaller so it fits nicer. We got the reviews, we got the rating. Next we need uh, check in, check out, and guests. Again, we made this widget on the home page, so let's copy it over. So for the adult count and the child count here, um, we had a custom state built on the other page. If you want to see how we did that custom state and how we got that number to go up and down when you click plus and minus you can go check out the first video for now just uh we're just going to show zero but uh yeah if you want to see how we did the custom states go check out the other video all right one more thing we have to do and that is add some actions or a workflow uh, to our reserve button so what's going to happen when you click reserve well it's going to make a booking right we need to actually reserve this so we need a new table. We're going to create a new table or a data type um, called bookings. So let's head back to our data tab. We're going to put a new type. We have properties user. Let's add bookings. So what kind of fields do we need here? Well, we'll need the property. We'll need to know which property this booking was made for. So here we can just choose our properties data type. So it'll give us the ability to relate those two tables, choose a property. Um, we also need the booking dates. So we can use a date range field for that. Um, we'll call this booked dates. And we'll also need to know like the adult count, which is a number field. How many adults, how many children. Children count. Another number field. I think that's good. It's good enough for now. So heading back to our reserve button, uh, if click on that, we're going to start a workflow, add an action. So when the reserve button is clicked, what's going to happen? Well, we're going to create a record in the bookings table that we just made. 
So that's in data things, create a new thing, type bookings. Um, we're gonna add some fields here. So the property will be the parent group's property. The book dates will be the date time picker check-in. And we need a range, so we're gonna choose range. The checkout. For now, property and book dates is good. So we'll just do that. And heading back to our preview. Let's take a look at, you know, Salty Blue actually, when I think about it, doesn't look that great. It's got a good name, but um, Cozy Two Bedroom Cottage just seems a lot more cozier. So where, when am I going? Um, I don't know, January 15th to six, no, you know what, let's make this a long one, 15th, two weeks. And reserve that, so what happened when I clicked reserved, it's gonna create that record in the bookings table. Let's just confirm that it did that. So heading back to data, we can go to app data, all bookings, there it is, Jan 15th, Jan 29th. Okay, clearly, uh, there's a lot more we can do here. We can add reviews. We can add a user profile page for both hosts and the guests. Um, we can add a page to see all my past and future bookings. Maybe even instant messaging between guests and hosts. Tons of stuff. But for this series, I'm going to stop here for now and move on. Uh, maybe we'll do some more clones. Maybe we'll look at uh, some different tools. Uh, but yeah, we're going to move on from Airbnb. I might come back to it later. We'll see. If you guys really want to know, to uh, see more Airbnb, just let me know in the comments what else uh, you're looking for. But I appreciate you watching. And if you like this video, please subscribe. Tune into the next one. Uh, feel free to leave a comment with your questions or video requests. Someone mentioned Etsy on the last one. Maybe we'll do Etsy. Uh, anyways, thanks a lot. We'll see you soon. Bye.